One of the things I think that most people don't understand is that hell is not a one size fits all experience. I want to spend some time talking about hell and the nature of yeah. hell, maybe clear some misconceptions. Maybe, yeah. um, maybe for some people, they haven't thought very deeply about hell and it will be a little troubling because we're going to think about the nature of hell. But maybe let's start with this. What is hell? What, what is it? Well, you know, the Bible uses imagery and metaphors and figurative language to try to communicate the horror of hell, which is separation from God for eternity. Um, uh, so it uses imagery of, for instance, fire and darkness. Well, if you took those literally, the uh, fire would light up the darkness and you wouldn't have darkness. So these are, these are figurative terms that the Bible uses to try to communicate. This is the worst possible experience that you could ever find yourself in. Um, so uh, even Martin Luther, even the uh, Ref reformers and others uh, agreed. The, the, these are metaphors. This is figurative language to try to communicate the horror of hell. Um, but there's so many misconceptions, as you say. For instance, people say, oh, uh, God, why would a loving God send people to hell? He doesn't send people to hell. We, we consign ourselves to hell. Uh, God offers redemption and eternal life uh, to anyone, anywhere, in any culture, at any time that reaches out to him and calls out to him um, for redemption. Um, he will find some way to provide it, I believe. Uh, and yet, um, um, some people uh, turn that down. Some people walk the other way. Uh, and they, uh, you know, uh, for some people, the ugly truth is heaven would be hell mm -hmm. because they hate the idea of God. There was one yes. Satanist who actually um, tattooed the cross of Christ on the bottom of his foot so that he could step on it every time he took a step just because he hated the idea of God. By the way, he read my book, Gaze for Christ, and is now a pastor in Wisconsin. Oh. Uh, but for that, yeah, it's an example of someone who hated the idea of God. The other misconception, I think, is that um, uh, there's torture. God is, it's a torture chamber. No, uh, torture is externally applied. Um, there is torment, which is, you know, a gnashing of teeth, an anger, a sense of uh, just... Um, uh, that, that, that people have in hell. But I think the most profound thing I learned that really changed my perspective, because you, you say, is this fair that, mm -hmm. that, that they're consigned to this place for eternity and so forth? Um, um, you know, and, and the Bible says in Genesis, will not the God of all the earth do what's right and do what's fair? And, and so one of the things I think that most people don't understand is that hell is not a one size fits all experience. Um, yeah. Adolf Hitler is not going to have the same experience in hell as maybe my neighbor who hates the idea of God as an atheist and, and um, um, rejects God and runs the other way from him, lives a totally immoral life. He, he, his experience in hell is going to be different. How do we know? Well, Jesus in Matthew chapter 11 uh, talks about certain cities that would suffer more than others uh, because they refused to repent despite the miracles that he had performed in those cities. Um, and so uh, some are going to suffer more than others. In Luke chapter 12, he tells a, a parable about the servant who knows his master's will and yet doesn't do it, that he's going to suffer more than the one who didn't really know the master's will um, and, and pursued you know, something counter to his master's uh, um, uh, good interests. Um, there'll be a difference in the way in which they are punished. And I think this is really important to, to, to see that um, whatever hell is, um, it's not going to be the same for Adolf Hitler and everybody else. Uh, there will be gradations of experience. I don't know what that looks like. I just know that this imagery of hell, uh, uh, of flames, of um, um, darkness and so forth, uh, suggests a the worst possible outcome for a human being uh, to be separated from any influence of the love of God. You know, we live in a difficult world. We live in a world where there's a lot of evil and a lot of pain. And, you know, so how would you like to be in a place because we experience some of the, the you know, the, the grace of God, the, the, the general grace of God in our world. Um, how would you like to be separated from any influence of God's love and grace forever? I mean, that's a, it's a horrible prospect. And I think that's what the Bible is trying to communicate. It's like if you have a little kid and the kid reaches up 
and he's going to touch a hot um, burner on a stove, you might say to him, don't, don't touch it. That's hotter than the sun. Well, no, it's not. I'm using figurative language, but I'm trying to tell him, you don't want to touch that. It is so hot. It's going to burn you. And, and so the Bible uses these metaphors, these figurative language to suggest that um, this is the worst outcome that a human being can face. And I think sometimes people might be tempted to feel some relief over the fact that those are metaphors. I remember uh, mm. the first time I read about that, and yeah. at first it was like, oh, okay, I, I kind of feel a sense of relief. But then it was like, but we really shouldn't feel a sense of relief because <laughs> that's just the strongest language that that we can understand to communicate right. how horrific it will be to be outside of, like, as you mentioned, any kind of goodness or love or yes. hope because – we only know what those things are because, like you said, we all experience that common grace. We all yes. know the love. We know love. We know hope. We all kind of have a sense of hope. And to imagine an existence that's completely devoid, really, of the goodness and love of God yeah. is is indescribably really horrific to think about. Yes, and um, it shouldn't really bring us a ton of relief to know that that that's a metaphorical type of, of uh, right. analogy there. Right. But I think the, the fairness of God can be seen in the yes. fact that people will now all be treated alike, that they'll be treated uh, commensurate with, um, uh, with who they are and what they've done. Yeah, and I think that solves one of the big misconceptions about hell when you talk about the degrees of punishment, because yeah. and that by, is yeah, backed up even uh, by the Old Testament systems where different— sins had different punishments. They had different yeah. degrees of punishment. I mean, it's a very consistent theme right. when we look at the justice of God as it's portrayed to us through the Bible. Um, yeah. But I think that does clear up one of the misconceptions people might have. A lot of people I've even experienced, uh, when they'll talk about hell, it, they think, oh, you know, so my sweet little grandma, who was a Unitarian or whatever, she's going to get the same thing as Hitler. That's not fair. Well, that's what we're saying. No, that isn't fair. Right. And that doesn't line up with what's being taught in the Bible about it. Yeah. And uh, I think digging a little deeper theologically into the doctrine of hell can help people maybe clear some of those obstacles. Mm -hmm.